Hello everyone, this is Anam Shiraz and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can spin up Apache Airflow 3 on Kubernetes. I have similar videos of how you can deploy Airflow on Kubernetes. The link is at the top right corner. But the reason of making this video is particularly because of the new Airflow 3 architecture, it's slightly different than how you deploy it in the Kubernetes cluster. So the video outline includes, first of all, we are going to set up a local Kubernetes cluster using the Rancher desktop. Then we are going to set up the dependencies, including the namespace, building the custom Airflow image, uh, MySQL database, and NFS. I'm going to tell you the reasons of why we are doing this in this video shortly. So don't worry about that. And then once that's done, then we are going to build the Airflow Helm chart. This is going to be from the official Airflow Helm chart. We are not going to build our custom one here. Uh, finally, once that's done, we are going to deploy and finally test it. So let's get started. To spin up a Kubernetes cluster on your local machine, the easiest approach is to use Rancher Desktop. So you just go to their website and download it for your own operating system. In my case, it's Mac OS Apple Silicon. I have already installed it, so you will see this icon at the top or at the bottom if you are in Windows. Uh, once you have this, it if you open the main window here, uh, by default, it automatically starts your Kubernetes cluster. So if you click on cluster dashboard, uh, you can see it's running. Yes, you can see one of the node here. From here, this tool also provides you to easily change the context here in case if you have multiple Kubernetes uh, clusters uh, managed. In my case, I do have multiple. So you just have to make sure you click the Rancher desktop. And from here, I am going to access my Kubernetes cluster using the tool called K9S. It's a very lightweight uh, CLI tool to manage your cluster in style, actually. Go to your terminal after installing K9S, just type in K9S, and this is going to bring up our Kubernetes cluster here. As you can see, the namespaces we are looking at. So first of all, we are going to create a namespace. Go back to EK9S and you can see the new namespace here and this is empty right now. So let's move to our IDE and start setting up the things to deploy Airflow. So on your root directory in your repository, just mention helm create. Uh, we're going to call our chart as let's say maxcotag Airflow 3. Right, as you can see, it created a directory for us uh, with the name of the chart and these are all the initial bits that are required for the helm chart. Um, so open charts.yml file, this is what you will see as committed initially by the helm. Uh, we are going to just simplify this. Right, so that's what minimal definition of chart would be. And then we are going to add dependencies. Uh, here, we need to add the dependency lists. First chart that we will need is the Airflow one. So uh, to get the latest version of this, you just list on all the available charts in Helm. So for that, you just say helm search repo and let's Grab on Airflow, right? So yes, we are interested in this one from official Apache Airflow. Uh, we gonna call it as Airflow. And then the version is 1.18.0. That's the chart version. And then the repository, which contains the URL. We shall also define the alias for this. I will tell you why and when this will be used. And the condition we set to enabled. Now, the second dependency that we will need is uh, MySQL, which we will use as uh, metadata for Airflow. By default, the Airflow Helm chart comes with Postgres, but I'm not a big fan of Postgres. I do, I do prefer MySQL. So that's why this has to be deployed separately because it doesn't come with Airflow. Uh, we can also search for the MySQL ones instead. In fact, I'm going to use MariaDB because that's what's compatible with my Mac machine here. MariaDB uh, version is this, the latest available, 22.0.0. And then the repository, we will mention it as the URL of the repository and alias as MySQL and the condition is enabled. So that should be good. Now, the third one that we will need is NFS, which is the network file system. Okay, so why we need NFS is actually, we are going to need a storage class that supports read, write many. Whereas if you set up Kubernetes cluster with Rancher desktop, it does come with the default storage class, local path. But the problem with this is this is read, write once. And for Airflow logs to be persistent, Airflow requires read, write many storage class. So that's what we are going to create with NFS. 
Right, so now once we have defined the chart with all of the dependencies, we are going to ask Helm to update the dependencies and then it's going to download all of these in our local path under the charts directory here. So for that, we are going to say Helm dependency update. Oh, sorry, we should be doing this under our chart directory, in fact. So you see it found three dependencies and it's saving all of those three charts under the charts directory. As you can see, all of these are downloaded. Nice. So now let us go ahead and define the values. Uh, in fact, our custom values that are going to override the default values of these charts. Um, this was the one created by the Helm. I'm going to just get rid of this and just start clean. In fact, as a best practice, we just leave the default values.yml file as is and instead create our own values file. Uh, let's call it our values.yml. And from here, let's start defining the values. So first of all, MySQL. Now, if you start typing, you will see the IDE tries to autocomplete this. And this is because we have defined the alias for MariaDB as MySQL. And now if you start typing any values within this, it's going to find those values within this given chart here. So for example, auth. So if you click one of this here, uh, you will see this is the original definition of uh, auth under MariaDB chart over here. So you see the default values of root password is empty. And these are all the default values of the other variables here. So that's what we are going to overwrite them here. And we set the persistence of this as uh, enable size is 20 GB. And we are going to mention our custom storage class, which we are going to create in NFS. We'll call it this. So yeah, I think that should be pretty much it for this one. Uh, let us go ahead and define the values for NFS. Yeah, I think this is the one that we defined the alias for it, NFS, correct? Let us go ahead and tell the NFS to create a storage class for us. We call it as NFS RWX. That's what we are mentioning over here. Um, also, we are going to let NFS to just persist its own uh, server logs in the local path, which comes as a standard storage class in the Ranger desktop, as you have seen. So I think, yeah, that should be it for NFS as well. And now let us go ahead and define the values for Airflow. Right, we'll start off by defining what version of Airflow we need. By default, the Airflow Helm chart uses the Celery Executor. So that's what we are going to ask it not to use it. Instead, use the Kubernetes Executor. And we are also disabling some bits required for the Celery Executor, like uh, obviously we're not using Postgres, instead we're using MySQL and Workers are required for a salary executor. We are just going to say, don't spin any workers. Then we define the log persistence. Uh, enabled is true. We give us 5 GB of size and the storage class is the one that we are going to create in NFS. All right. So another important bit is uh, that we are going to tell Airflow to use our MySQL. For that, we uh, just have to override the metadata connection details. So here we are going to provide the username and password, which we set it up in MySQL over here. So make sure it matches exactly the same. And DB is Airflow. And then the port is uh, 3306. I think that's the default set already. So, oh no, actually, no, it's uh, the default is the Postgres one. So yeah, we are going to overwrite that one. And the, another important bit is the host. Now here uh, you can uh, define your host URL. Let's say if it's an RDS, you define the RDS URL. If it's a, in a local host, you define that. But in our case, because our MySQL is running in our own namespace, you know, this MySQL also creates a service so that the database can be exposed and be accessible to the other pods. So the way how the Kubernetes resolve this is by using the service name and followed by the namespace. So in this, it will be airflow-mysql, so that would be the service name. Uh, I will show you once it spins up. And then you provide the namespace over here and then .svc.cluster.local. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it, the main bits. Uh, but in addition, I mean, you can override some config bits as well for the Airflow. So let's say under config, we say core 
um, there was something called load examples uh, we can set this to true and airflow helm chart also provides uh, another bit called extra environments so here you can define extra environments which are going to be attached with all of the working components including the api server scheduler and the workers because it's a multi line so i'm gonna say pipe and then um this is just another example variable, which obviously we are doing it over here, but just for the sake of showing you that this is how it works, you can add and override other environment variables as well over here. We are going to add an additional bit in this configs here. So which is that we are going to ask the Airflow to fetch one of our uh, remote DAG, which is in our public GitHub repository. So for that, I think we have in our chart something called uh, DAGs and in which we have git sync and you can see all of the values of git sync under this helm chart over here uh, by default it's uh, not enabled so we are just going to say enabled is true and uh, i think it by default it picks up the DAGs from this repository but we are just going to provide our own and the branch is main because the code is in the root of this directory so um sub path we're just gonna say as empty because by default it's test dags another bit i'm asking it to add is to wait for 30 seconds so this is um, an interval between each sync attempts in seconds and in case if your dag is in a private repository you can also provide the ssh key but that's out of the scope of this video so right i think things are looking good now uh, our values is almost final uh, to the minimal as much as we can set it up i have also deleted some templates from within this directory because those templates were created by default when we initialized our chart but in our case we don't need any because we are using all of the components from their official helm chart so we are not defining our own custom templates here right so let's go ahead and deploy this and see how it goes so to deploy this dependency, you just say helm upgrade dash dash install and the name of your release. And in this case, we are going to say airflow and dot represents the current directory. And we provide the namespace and create it if it doesn't exist. And then also we have to mention which values.yml file to use. Right. So let us go ahead and click enter. And look at our namespace, as you can see creates MySQL and NFS server, which is already running now, which is fast. Um, it, it creates a job, uh, which is firstly, it migrates the database, making sure all of the tables and databases is available before any rest of the components start working. So you see, they're all waiting for this job to complete. Uh, MySQL is still not looking quite happy. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with it. Uh, let us just, you know, restart to give it another nudge. Right, seems like MySQL is now ready for connections. Uh, and our Airflow migration job has also been completed. Uh, now, I think the next job is it creates a default uh, user. And you can also see uh, under DAC processor board, you can see the git sync uh, in init containers as well which are uh, trying to pull the DAGs from any remote repositories. Right, seems like everything is up and running now. Uh, let us go ahead and port forward the API server uh, in localhost 8080. Okay. And here we provide the username and password that we defined in our Helm chart. In this case was admin admin. Nice, so we can see our Airflow 3 web user interface. So on your left side, go to DAGs and you will be able to see all of your example DAGs. We should also be able to see our hello world example DAG, which we are fetching from the GitHub. Hello Airflow 3, very nice. Um, let's go ahead and try to run this, just enable. And it should spin up another board in Kubernetes and which fetches the latest code from the Git first and before it runs. Yeah, seems like that ran successfully. Um, we can also see the logs of this. Just click this and very nice. Yep, that looks good. Everything is up and running. You can also explore some other example DAGs as well. So yeah, by this point, I think everything should just run as smooth as it should. 
no i think it just needs some manual trigger cool so that's all looking good so just to let you know a few bits about uh, the helm uh, be because our release name is aflow so you can see all of the pod names are prefixed with our release name so aflow dash mysql aflow dash the pod processor and if you look at our services as well you should be able to see like every component like whether it's a pod name a service name a config map uh, the helm actually prefix with our release name so in this case you see our mysql service name is aflow dash mysql so that is why we are mentioning here aflow dash mysql so yes this is an important thing to know just in case if you are seeing that your components are not speaking with your database that's because uh, you just have to make sure that the host is always correct cool i think by now you have a clear understanding about how we can spin up this airflow on on kubernetes cluster and yes i think that is all for this video if it was helpful to you guys please don't forget to like share and do subscribe if you haven't already and if you have any questions mention them down in the comments below i will try my best to answer them and yes that is all for now so stay tuned i will see you in the next exciting video take care bye